Christine, uh, thank you for taking the time. We know how busy and complicated these, uh, these times are. And I'm going to go straight to the point. Um, we talk about future of, of banking, mainly, uh, with you. Um, future of banking, or a future, is um, very connected to technology, first of all. Um, from automation to digitalization or artificial intelligence, um, how do you see the future of your industry from, from the perspective of technology in the next uh, couple of years, um, not just in Romania, <laughs> but, but um, at a higher level, of course? Now, well, I, I think a new technology is extremely important. It will play a more and more important role uh, going forward. I mean, um, let's not forget what a bank does. I mean, there are, if we simplify it a little bit, we do two things. Uh, we keep people money safe, and that money we transform in money that can be used to give credits on the long term in the uh, to uh, uh, purposes that are, are productive and so basically that's what you what you do as a bank you take savings you make it into money that, uh, that can be uh, lent to, to companies etc etc and uh, create uh, wealth but of course we also make payments and we give uh, um, a lot of uh, uh, credits to, to private individuals as well and that whole area will def, will change uh, a lot i mean in the past it was more about making the payment uh, and i think it becomes more and more about the data about the payments uh, that is more important than the payment itself almost uh, because if you know uh, very well uh, what, what the payment behavior is of, of, uh, of clients and talk about private individuals now and then you uh, will be able to to make much better suggestions or risk assessments about uh, what kind of uh, loan those those clients would need uh, or you could compare their profile to the profile of others there's a lot of value that you could create for for, for clients i mean uh, if, if you would know uh, that, that you spent more than your peers uh, on certain products or, or certain uh, utilities, for, for instance, uh, it would be interesting to know maybe for, for, for clients. So that technology uh, will, it will be uh, for uh, data driven uh, uh, more than in the, in the past. And, and uh, so banks that are best at this uh, from the point of view of crediting, uh, so reducing credit losses on the one hand, uh, or making sure that you make have the, the best offers for for your clients for in terms of, of uh, value creation uh, will be uh, more and more important. Uh, the days of uh, having uh, just a, a personal banker uh, that that uh, uh, gives you gives you advice uh, are are over. Uh, of course, there's still room uh, for human interaction. The technology will become uh, more and more important, more and more important. I mean, that's also why you see that that yeah, there are other players, uh, fintechs out there, and that offer and some of them uh, their services, payment services for free. Uh, uh, why? Uh, because, uh, as as you say, I mean, uh, as the saying goes, uh, if you're not paying for it, then you are the, the product uh, so uh, they're just collecting data on you and on your, your payments uh, uh, from your payment behavior and will at some time in the future use that uh, or by selling it uh, or by prof profiling you so uh, te technology is, is more and more important i mean there are a few things we know about the future uh, I, I i think a client in the future would also like its bank to keep its money safe but, and not only its money safe but also its data safe and they want, want to have faster access to services or f faster services and of course uh, cheaper so those things we know uh, and uh, a lot of things we don't know but those three things we know and for that we will need technology yeah um we had a speaker live from uh, los angeles uh, yesterday um, and he, he worked uh, for 20 years in the movie industry. Um, he did movies like Lord of the Rings, Matrix, X, Revolu uh, you know, etc. Um, and he said something about robots that, uh, that stayed with me. And he said, the first real robot that we all interacted and we constantly interact with is an ATM machine. An ATM machine mm -hmm. is a robot in the end. Um, you said something about a personal banker uh, but I would add to that an AI personal banker. So from a perspective of, of not just um, uh, you know, cash or, or desk services, but also from a perspective of loans and other types of financial um, uh, you know, uh, relations between us, um, 
do you uh, see more and more artificial intelligence, not just in, in uh, Raiffeisen Bank, but uh, in, in the entire banking system, um, at least in CE, being used? Of course, no, 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 uh, absolutely. I mean, artificial intelligence, uh, big data. Uh, I mean, uh, whatever technology is uh, is available, banks are looking at that on, in terms of how to use it. Uh, it is not only uh, the, the technology itself, the application of the technology, uh, but you also have uh, regulatory issues. But, but in, indeed, I mean, if you have, have the data, you have the on the client, uh, you have uh, a massive amounts of data that, that uh, uh, artificial intelligence can cope with and, and uh, see things that humans uh, don't don't see. I mean, uh, it's not difficult to, to, to see that uh, those might be, uh, be able to, to give better uh, better advice than uh, today uh, a human does, like in, in other industries. Uh, and at the same time, uh, I mean, like also maybe in medical services, every now and then uh, uh, you, you might want to see uh, talk to a real person too. So uh, I, th I think one of the challenges is, well, how far do you want to go uh, in terms of, of eliminating uh, human uh, interaction? I mean, there is and there is, uh, when you take financial decisions, there's a lot of anxiety there. And, and um, so uh, uh, that goes way beyond, uh, uh, let's say, taking cash out of an ATM. But it is really, uh, well, are, uh, are you sure you took the, the right decision? Uh, and so um, so there, that, uh, it, there's no doubt about it that uh, artificial intelligence uh, is going to play an important role in the banking going forward. Yeah. Um... Whenever I go to the bank, and uh, I'm talking about this bank in particular, um, you know, private or, or institutional capacity, um, I, I like actually to interact more with people than, um, than to just you know, send an email and, and fix it. Um, have you felt um, any, uh, or did you see any change in the way your employees work this year? Um, prob I, I guess a lot of them had to work from home or had to do uh, you know, telework as well. Um, how was the year from this perspective uh, for, for Raiffeisen? Yeah, well, it was obviously a, a huge challenge uh, to, um, to, to make sure that everybody could work from home or almost everybody could work from home. And um, because yeah, you, have, uh, you have confidentiality issues, security issues, uh, ca capacity needed to be enlarged, uh, people needed more laptops, etc. But in, uh, almost everybody can work from home uh, you know, these these days and that is uh, that's a big achievement that's also of course an, a priority at the same time uh, of course uh, yeah, clients still need to be served and, and that is and as you say a lot of them a lot of them want to talk simply to uh, uh, to a person so uh, for instance we also have to significantly beef up our uh, call center capacity uh, and so that uh, People uh, uh, don't want to go to a branch anymore, but they still want to talk to a person. So they, what they do, they call to a call center. So uh, in, in the end, uh, and so I think I'm quite happy with the, the speed and, and uh, which which we managed to to move to this new reality where we have uh, most of our staff working from home, and uh, but also the way uh, the, the speed with our, which our clients uh, adapted uh, because yeah they, they have, we we tried to uh, reduce the the need for them to come to the branch to an absolute minimum. Uh, so uh, that is uh, that was a that was a, a big move, but uh, we managed to to adapt uh, uh, relatively quickly. The, and the question is now, uh, how does the future look like from this point of view? Um, uh, well, we had a, a, a conversation yesterday in Future Summit with a Romanian uh, health expert, uh, and some of you know him, uh, Vlad Mixic, um, and it, it it didn't sound good. Uh, from a sanitary perspective, uh, in terms of the the medium uh, term, at least 2021, but we'll get to 2021 uh, towards the end of our conversation. Um, you mentioned uh, w we mentioned people a lot, um, so I was wondering uh, when you think of the role of a of a bank or the banking industry um, in in the future, um, uh, what do you see as the role? Is it changing in terms of um, um, taking the lead? Um, in, in some uh, social and uh, political, not political, but policy more uh, ways. Uh, do you see more role for banks in the future in the way countries uh, and democracies are, are shaped in the end? 
Well, I, I think that's a, that's a really interesting question, and it is not only valid for banks. I mean, uh, uh, when you, uh, you you see this uh, uh, on on research internationally, I mean, so a lot of people expect uh, from from CEOs uh, for important or or big companies that they are more active in the society that they they are part of, and and I think that implies that that uh, is certainly also to be applied to banks. Uh, at, uh, at when you think about it, uh, um, so. How do you distinguish uh, as, as, a, as a bank, uh, one bank from, from another? I mean, uh, you all make the same, uh, you all have the same facilities, you all have the same functionality. So I, I think there is, uh, we have to go back and to understand what's the purpose uh, of, a, of a bank. Uh, and, and, uh, and as I said earlier, uh, okay, we offer payment services, but uh, the, the, the basic purpose is basically to create money. Uh, so you take savings. Uh, and everybody has these savings and they can access access them anytime, uh, but you use the savings uh, also to give loans. And that is a very important process. Uh, so now, but now you get into some interesting questions. And so uh, would people want uh, their savings to be used to finance uh, certain industries that they don't agree with? I mean, that is, um, that's an, uh, uh, so that, that's, a, that's an interesting question. And, and there are already banks, uh, uh, that, that give uh, depositors the money, the op opportunity to to uh, say, well, I want my money to be used exclusively in this area or in that area. Better example is on on, on funds management, uh, where you can uh, when you can opt for for uh, sustainable funds uh, and uh, or uh, uh, or not uh, make, make that choice. So I, I think uh, we uh, have to. This is a sort of discussion that we need to have in the, in, in the society, so that goes beyond uh, just uh, beyond uh, profit. Uh, profit is important, uh, just like a salary for for an individual. Uh, you need that in order to be uh, to to survive in the long run. Uh, and uh, but uh, it's not a scope in itself. And, so I think the, there there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, debate uh, or there should be a lot of debate about this. Uh, yeah. uh, what do we uh, expect the, to be the the roles of banks in the in a society? You, uh, you, it can also not be giving money to everybody who who needs money, uh, as some people seem to think, uh, uh, or to uh, um, uh, and and um, so this. Uh, I would welcome a little bit more uh, reflective uh, debate about well, what do we expect uh, from banks uh, in the, in the future in the in the society, uh, and uh, but that's valid for for other companies as well. Yeah, speaking of a future of banks now and the interaction with their clients, be them uh, corporate clients or or individuals, um, I'm going to draw a, a parallel with cities. Um, you have a, um, a particip participative budgets, or uh, in some cities in Romania, there's you know, some beginnings, but there's others in which this works quite well. Um, and you mentioned that some banks, I, I guess outside of Romania at least, uh, are also asking their um, uh, shareholders and stakeholders to some extent what should they invest in. Are you also looking as a as a, an industry in Romania to talk more? or to get much more input from your customers as to in which you should put your money, um, either investments or CSR for that matter? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think uh, a, a few things. I, and I, I don't think we are as organized as we should be as, uh, um, as banking industry and, and not, not only, I think as general, as, as private sector in general in, in Romania. And uh, so, uh, so uh, banks, uh, I think, uh, can be better organized to, to address also questions like this and, and uh, not only now focus on, on regulatory stuff. Uh, um, then I think there should be room for, for individual banks to have different approaches. Uh, so I, I think they will all, they all have the, the same challenge. And, and you can profile yourself as, as a bank that is uh, more uh, willing to, to, to look at nah, green finance uh, or to, to make that at the champion in that area uh, and sustainable uh, sustainable banking that that sort of things uh, or you can uh, simply choose to be a follower in the follower in that uh, in that area but uh, uh, sooner or later uh, i think a large part of the of, of the society will uh, want to understand what your what your position is uh, and 
Uh, CSR is, 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 is also important, but uh, we should go beyond the point of, uh, well, what, what I don't like is this concept of giving back, uh, because I think the most important thing is that you don't start with taking more than is necessary. Uh, so, but uh, you, um, uh, I, I, I think, uh, I, I don't believe in, in let's say, uh, the, uh, what, um, 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 Come on, the uh, Nobel Nobel uh, laureate. Uh, uh, come on, he said. Well, basically, the uh, the only role of the responsibility of a company is to make uh, to make profits and respect the law and to make uh, pro profits. And uh, and then um, and that's certainly not the case. I think you uh, you have to look at, at your role in uh, uh, in in society and also look at uh, how you affect uh, other other stakeholders. And that that I think is a behavior that you. Uh, can ask from all industries uh, to uh, not only banking uh, but also uh, pharma or also um, uh, agriculture uh, or or, uh, or the, the meat processing industry or what, whatever you whatever you care about yeah um, and speaking of, of um, involvement not giving back but building together so that this is how I'd see it um, we're also uh, uh, very happy to have uh, Raiffeisen as a supporter of young and youth entrepreneurship in Romania. Um, by the way, for all of you that are uh, seeing this, you can meet uh, uh, Andrea uh, Porojano from, uh, she's the FinTech Partnerships Manager with Raiffeisen Bank, and she's a member of the Jury of Future Makers. Don't forget today from two until four, and tomorrow from two until five, you have 35 pitches from our Future Makers incubator uh, they're all super excited and a bit nervous uh, to do these online pitches, uh, but I'm sure they're going to do uh, uh, great. Now, speaking of fintech, because um, you also briefly mentioned before, um, um, there's a, a variety of conversations for a number of years, um, and a lot of um, conversations put fintech versus banking. Um, I don't think that's the right um, approach. Uh, what is your approach towards the fintech, the larger uh, ecosystem, if you like, of, of financial technology and, mm -hmm. and startups? Yeah, I, I think it's an, uh, it's, it's very interesting. That I think that the jury is uh, still out on the, on the number of things, but uh, a few things have become clear. And so, um, the fintechs have, te have the technology, and the banks have the customer bases, and it is. Uh, so I think they, they need each other more uh, than that. I, I think they are uh, competing or uh, clashing head, heads on. Uh, so uh, banks, uh, so a, a lot of fintechs uh, have been focusing on, on growing volumes, uh, but are, are not, not on profits. I mean, banks, uh, regulated banks, especially if you are also uh, crediting, uh, credit institution, uh, you, you have to be profitable. And so you cannot just say, well, because you have to uh, keep your, your capital um, uh, standards uh, uh, up to up to standard to to able to accommodate uh, any growth and credit. So uh, that's that's the first difference. I mean, so how long uh, can a fintech survive without being being profitable? And so uh, an, another description I, I saw the other day uh, was uh, that uh, a fintech uh, is 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 more like a fun friend or a party friend. So that you. And that you, you uh, like to hang out uh, with and uh, has this, this flashy uh, products, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but if you uh, if you really need a friend uh, to move to help you to move furniture or or other uh, other problems, uh, then uh, suddenly you realize that you need uh, a little bit more uh, yeah, uh, boring but but reliable friends. And so I thought it was an interesting parallel. That is the best metaphor uh, uh, I've heard ever. We will we will we will use this from now on. It's a very good metaphor. Well, uh, um, I think there's probably there, there's some truth in it. So, this, but, but in the end, so I, I think uh, the the the, the, uh, the banks will learn from fintechs. Fintechs, especially when it is about crediting, uh, this uh, I, I think they will have to learn from from banks. That is uh, making payments is is, is one thing. Uh, but uh, uh, giving a credit is something else. Uh, getting your money back is again something else, and that is not so. That's not so easy. Uh, um, so uh, uh, I, I think that they will uh, uh, and, and for uh, uh, re reinforce each other in in a way. 
Uh, and that's also what we like to work with fintechs. I mean, we 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 work with startups. We have, we help startup programs, uh, and for startup, it's really important and to to uh, to have the, the opportunity and to to get access to our client base. Uh, for instance, if we, if we would get to 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 uh, testing of products or uh, and feasibility of products, so uh, I I uh, I'm not uh, concerned about. Um, uh, let's say that, that banks will be uh, totally replaced by, by, by fintechs. Uh, uh, but the, the payment part is the easy part in, in a way. Uh, but, uh, um, but there is certainly uh, also when, when dealing with, with big data, etc. I'm sure uh, fintechs, uh, there, are, there are a lot of things that uh, banks can learn from, from fintechs. But don't estimate the effort that is being made at banks worldwide now to, uh, now, to catch up uh, where that is uh, is. Uh, uh, where there's a perception that they, they remain, remain behind. There's an analysis that I recommend all our viewers uh, uh, and I encourage all of you that are in the event platform uh, to interact uh, with, with the whole platform. We have a lot of things on the event platform that you can check um, uh, or our viewers on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, but also Google something that is called CEE Fintech Atlas uh, 2019 now. This is a, a, a report, um, uh, an insights report from 19 uh, countries uh, in the um, Raiffeisen uh, ecosystem, let's call it, um, that offers really good insights, not just in the fintech actors, but um, also in the uh, fintech uh, and uh, investment uh, opportunities. Um, now, um, speaking of uh, um, a, a larger perspective, um, I would actually want to go to a bit to the future. Um, after this session with you, we take a small break and then we move to a, one of the most important sessions of Future Summit, which is about Romania, but it is about how we look at the economic outlook of, for 2021. We have uh, Daniela Nicolescu, State Secretary from the Ministry of Economy, Catalin Pauna from the World Bank, Valentin Ionescu from um, uh, the National Prognosis I think, uh, uh, Commission, and Livia Sun from uh, the uh, Concordia Employers uh, Confederation. But I want to take a couple of minutes to ask you, um, as a, not just a representative of, of a bank, but also as a, a president of Concordia, um, how do you see the, the economic outlook for Romania for 2021? What are some of the top three, four things, you know, the risk and the opportunity that you see for next year? Yeah. Well, I mean, um, as a banker, let me start with the risks. Uh, so, uh, um, I, I think um, there's still a lot of uh, a lot of things are unclear about the COVID impact. Uh, I mean, it is relatively simple to see what the direct impact is. Uh, so, uh, on certain uh, industries that that uh, are directly impacted, uh, but uh, what the indirect impact is is uh, it's much more difficult to see how this uh, all will tickle down uh, through down through through the, the whole. Uh, the whole value chain is uh, is much more difficult to to, to foresee. And so, from from this point of view, I think it is uh, um, you you want to be prepared for um, also for for somewhat of the unexpected. And what does that mean? Uh, that means your your uh, a lot of companies will probably relatively uh, uh, conservative, uh, maybe uh, invest uh, a little bit less or a little bit later than. Uh, and so there, that will have an, uh, an economic impact. Uh, on, the, on the other hand, uh, um, when, you, when you look around in, in Romania, and we also we have elections and a new, new government, and we cannot make an abstraction of this. Uh, so I think one of the great things about Romania is that you have an incredible potential and to, uh, to improve productivity. I mean, if we really manage to deal with bureaucracy, if we really uh, focus on getting better legislation, uh, the way we, uh, which is also a very important theme within the Concordia, uh, where we have a better dialogue uh, between uh, the legislative process and and uh, companies, private sector, so we get better laws that actually produce the impact that uh, that is foreseen by the legislator, as, as, as instead of being counterproductive. I mean, there, there's a lot we can do to to increase productivity. If we can increase productivity, and then we will have uh, the, uh, more money in the budgets. Uh, we can increase uh, salaries, uh, uh, and uh, so will uh, so that opportunity is there. Uh, 
I've sometimes said uh, what we seem to be missing is is the ambition level of, of where do we want to, where where do we want to go. Uh, when we talk about Romania, we talk a lot about uh, the, um, the, the 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 geopolitical uh, positioning, the uh, natural resources, etc. etc. Et but that's not enough. I mean, <laughs> we need to have an, uh, a good administration and. Uh, and that has the right capacity to finally create the infrastructure uh, uh, that we need, uh, infrastructure in the large sense of the word, uh, to uh, have the uh, economic uh, development that we need. So I see the potential, uh, but in order to, to unlock that potential, we, we, need, uh, uh, we need more. And uh, COVID uh, will, will pass, so it's difficult to say what the impact will be. Uh, but uh, like for most people, uh, so uh, mo most people will survive, most companies will survive. Uh, and so we all should be preparing for what, uh, what happens afterwards. And, and uh, in my view, uh, we should really uh, focus on, on increasing uh, productivity and then indirectly we will deal with pensions, uh, low salaries, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. We have about five to six minutes left. Um, I know uh, since March, all of us have been talking about a lot of letters, uh, V, U, W, uh, you know, all these letters that would reflect the way the economy would recover to some extent. There's a, I had a conversation uh, last night with one of your colleagues and we were talking about the triple W. Um, uh, so uh, I, I recently read, I think uh, this morning, uh, an article that looked at um, Nike, uh, the Nike symbol, which is the swoosh. I think you, I mean, <laughs> as a sports yeah. person, you know that. Um, it's probably difficult to predict the latter and the evolution, uh, but in the same time, we need to have some form of, of prediction as entrepreneurs. So what would be your um, advice to Romanian uh, entrepreneurs, be them at the beginning or more advanced, uh, about the next six months to eight months? Um, you know, what should we, not just what letter comes, um, but what should we, um, do in the end um, to you know, yeah. stay safe and yeah. sane. Well, I, I think there. Are, if you simplify it, I think there are two. Uh, I mean, this is like like how is it like uh, the old joke about uh, the 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 clothing size in the army? I mean, you, uh, you have only two sizes. It's too big or it's too small. Uh, so here, I think it's the, the the same question. Well, where do you want to be wrong? Do you want to be too careful and then miss out on an opportunity? Uh, or you want to be too, or you you're too aggressive, and then have a, have a huge cost. So I, I think depending in what sector you operate, uh, depending uh, on on uh, what your what, what what the power is, your financial power, uh, uh, and uh, then uh, you you should you should adopt uh, or you place yourself on this curve. Uh, uh, in reality, uh, I think. It is, um, it is indeed difficult to predict uh, what kind of letter it is. We all know that after it has all been cleared up, a lot of people will claim that they were right. Uh, but usually these people don't act uh, upon this. Uh, so and, uh, so it, 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 is, uh, it is difficult to come up with a an, uh, with an, uh, an, uh, generic uh, uh, point of view. But I, I think each of them should, should uh, consider uh, to um, uh, where to position yourself and how critical this is for your for your business. Uh, this uh, when you're, uh, there's also an opportunity, uh, uh, and and uh, but I, I think the whole the essence of being an entrepreneur is that you uh, you, you take position uh, and you look at it in terms of how to adapt and uh, what opportunities you see. I mean, uh, just asking for the state to uh, to help you to survive a difficult period and then hoping that everything goes back to, to normal. Uh, I don't think that's the, that's the future. Uh, well, I hope that's not the future um, as well of some industries. Uh, one uh, um, important way to actually move forward is to think also in investment terms. So uh, don't forget uh, on day four, uh, November 19, uh, from 12 o'clock, we have a session on venture capital and startups. What will change with Kelvin Tan from Singapore, from GTR Ventures, Marvin Liao, uh, he's a capitalist, Hila Brenner from Techstars uh, uh, in Israel, uh, and Diana Florescu from Grai Ventures together with Matei Dumitrescu, and a very special, important session on social impact investment and, and responsible financing and responsible 
um, and uh, sustainable financing as well, um, with Silke Horakova uh, from the Czech Republic, Eva Konchal from EVPA, and Renata Berkic from uh, the Feel Good Impact Investment Fund. They are on Wednesday from, from 12. Now, the last uh, and final question for Stephen van Groningen. Stephen, what is the most difficult question you ask yourself these days? About the future. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I, I don't know. I, I think I ask myself. Uh, uh, um, I, I'd like to make to make a, to distinguish between things that uh, I uh, have under my control, or at least the, where I can uh, influence things, and I, the ones that are outside of my control, and, or that I can, cannot influence or don't want to influence. I mean, basically. Uh, be the, the stoic philosophy uh, approach and I just want to make sure uh, that on the one the factors that I can influence uh, that uh, that I operate in that field uh, rather than wasting time resources or worrying about uh, things that are totally outside of my my control and and uh, so I, I try to clarify stuff that I can clarify uh, and uh, also to, to, to my to my, my team uh, with 5,000 employees uh, so uh, or uh, uh, and that is uh, that's not so simple because yeah I mean that uh, that takes a bit of uh, of, of re reflection so uh, um, so that's that's something that uh, that I'm um, constantly constantly uh, thinking and uh, recalibrating that's, that's a very uh, and, good, yeah. Uh, sorry. Yeah. No, please go on. No, no, I, I mean, so in, in terms of, of it, it's not one question. Uh, that's, that's what I say. I mean, uh, banking is also an incredible number of stakeholders. So uh, you, you, uh, you also have to make sure you, you keep this, this, this basically balance between all the interests of all the, all the stakeholders. So, I mean, that's, that's a bit of a balancing act. Uh, and uh, so again, that that uh, that requires a bit of reflection every now and then. True. Um, that's also good advice for uh, not just for entrepreneurs, but also from employees for employees uh, in in any country in the end. Um, because uh, one of the things that we see popping up around the world, and there's also data on that um, for countries that know how to measure um, uh, the stress level um, and the level of uh, clinical depression in employees around the world has gone up uh, this year tremendously, um, at least in the US and, and Western Europe, and I'm positive also in, in Eastern Europe. Um, so we need to reflect on the things that we can, we can control um, and focus on that, uh, on those, and then uh, you know, uh, relax just a bit on, on those that we don't see yet or, or are completely uh, uncertain. Um, thank you very much for, for taking the time. Uh, good luck in everything that, that you do. It's, uh, I know for, for not just for banks, but for a lot of industries, the end of every year is a complicated year, uh, but an exciting year as well. Mm -hmm. um, and we, let's not forget all of us, uh, at least in Romania, we do have a, a different type of year or a different type of ending of year. So I encourage everyone to go out on December 6th and vote. Um, I'm not saying who you should vote for, but I'm saying that's important to go out and vote as in the safest uh, sanitary measures um, that we can individually and uh, as a state uh, can, can take. Thank you very much, Stephen, for, for joining us in Future Summit. Yeah, thank you and uh, good luck with uh, until 11 o'clock this, this evening. And uh, so, yeah. um, so hang in there. I think it's, uh, and it was a pleasure. So uh, anytime. And uh, so let's uh, stay healthy and uh, deal with the future. Thank you. Very